This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Motorola Droid X2 on Verizon. As you can guess from the name, this is the replacement for the original Motorola Droid X, a phone that we and many others like quite well as a high-end Android smartphone. From the outside, it looks much the same. You can see you've got the same clicky buttons here. These are not capacitive. The soft touch, rubbery finish, large display, 4.3 inch. The same interesting curved design here where it comes up for the camera lens here. This is 8 megapixel like the previous one. This one can record 720p video though. Dual LED flash. Same kind of battery door. This just slides down. Takes two fingers. And there's your battery with the little pull tab. It's a 1540 milliamp battery. Nice metal door by the way. soft touch finish all around. You've got USB port here and a micro HDMI port. Volume controls are over here. Power buttons up here and so is your stereo headphone jack. So what's different about the X2 versus the original Droid X? The resolution has increased. This is a quarter HD 540 by 960 pixels. That's a lot of pixels. That's 240 PPI pixel density very sharp screen, very bright and high contrast as well as you can see especially when you have a background like that which is a very high contrast grayscale background but really sharp display text is looking awesome on this not as super colorful as Super AMOLED or Super AMOLED Plus like you see on the Droid Charge on Verizon but nonetheless a very natural and clear display this also upgrades to a dual core Tegra 2 CPU running at 1 GHz as opposed to a single core TI processor in the original Droid and this guy is fast. Benchmarks at about 2470 in quadrant. And it can play 1080p video no problem as well. The phone has 6 gigs of internal storage of which 4.3 gigs are available for your use. And Verizon ships this with an 8 gig micro SD card as well. So really the dual core CPU is the biggest improvement on this. Of course the camera quality is improved. You have Wi-Fi, 802.11bgn, Bluetooth and GPS as you'd expect on the phone. If you have an original Droid X, you're probably not going to run an upgrade to this, but then again, the original Droid X came out in July of last year, and so you're certainly still on contract. But for folks looking to upgrade from a lesser phone, this is definitely one to look at. This has 3G EVDO Rev A. It does not have 4G LTE on Verizon. Right now, it seems like you can either choose a dual core or LTE, but you can't get both in the same phone. So it depends on whether you're interested in LTE and high-speed data or you're interested in a dual-core phone. And if you want a fast phone that's relatively slim and fairly light, this is definitely it. It's 4.3 inches as I said and it's not really a huge phone other than in height. So it's certainly relatively portable and pocketable compared to something like the HTC Thunderbolt for example with a 4.3 inch display that is bigger than this guy in terms of width as well. In terms of software, we've got Froyo on here, Android 2.2, and we don't have a complete MotoBlur implementation like we see on lower end Motorola phones. It doesn't make you log in with a MotoBlur account initially. However, all the social networking stuff is here if you want to make use of it. For example, if you say you want to add an account in settings, you see a myriad of possible options here Google account, email, corporate exchange. Backup Assistant from Verizon, Facebook, LinkedIn, MySpace, Twitter, Picasa, Yahoo Mail, YouTube, Count, and Visual Voicemail. So there are plenty of options there. And there are some custom widgets here. We have the calendar here. We have a social networking widget and a media widget that can pull stuff from places like Photo Bucket as well. And if you have no use for these, as with any Android phone, press and hold on them and you can drag them to delete them off the screen as well. Got a weather forecast widget over here. Motorola's usual wireless controls, always very handy. And that is it for your home screen of interest. In terms of other software on the phone, we've got Amazon Kindle preloaded and Amazon MP3 as well. Verizon's backup assistant, Blockbuster. Usual suite of Google apps, including Yay, Google Search, the web browser, email, and Gmail. We've got an FM radio on this as well, file manager. Navigation from Google and Maps as well. And some VCast stuff. It's not too junked up with bloatware, happily. You've got VCast apps, VCast music, VCast videos on here. And of course, VZ Navigator if you want to use Verizon's paid 
turn-by-turn -turn solution. And that's their Android optimized version of VZ Navigator. GPS on this, very good. Indoors in the middle of the house, it gets a fix just like that. And of course, since this is a Verizon phone, you get Skype Mobile, and they've been bundling slacker lately. Data speeds on 3G are pretty good by Verizon standards. We've been getting about 1.1 megs down and 400k for upload speeds, according to speed test on it. Voice quality, as you'd expect from a higher-end Motorola phone, really good. And reception as well. We're in a middling Verizon reception area. We're usually get about half bars or typically 100 dB signal, for those of you who know what dB are about. And this guy gets, as you can see, full bars, and we average up somewhere between 89 to 95 dB. So if you live in a signal-challenged area, a good choice. If voice is important to you, also a good choice. Let's take a look at performance on this. We will first play some video. And as you can see, there's even an Add Social Network option embedded into the video player here. Just hit on my library, I can see the videos I have. We're going to start out with something fairly challenging. We're going to play a 1080p video. And the phone has no problem with it whatsoever. And you can also plug this in via HDMI. Just get a micro HDMI to HDMI cable and watch these videos on your big screen TV as well. And the speaker, once you crank it up, you can hear it's pretty loud. And also fairly clear. So that speaker is also pretty good for in-car navigation, no trouble hearing, and also it makes a pretty good speakerphone. It might be not quite as good as the Paragon of speakerphones, the original Motorola Droid and Verizon, but it's pretty pretty darn good. And since this has a Tegra 2, of course, we've got to have some Tegra 2 games on here. And that means Need for Speed Shift is pre-installed. And we'll turn the volume down a bit on it. It's a very loud game. As you've been able to see so far, the phone is quite responsive. The dual core CPU really does its job. And it's got a plenty of memory on board also for multitasking. And we'll just go to default. Really smooth. And since this is running Froyo, it can handle full Adobe Flash. We've got the latest Flash 10.3 on here. It ships with 10.1 pre installed, but a little update from the market will bring you right up to 10.3. And we've set the web browser to load Flash by default, so we've got plenty of Flash ads running on our own home screen right here. Browser is fluid, supports pinch zooming with two fingers. And we'll check out a full YouTube video next. So now we're on the full YouTube site. This is a desktop version of the site, not the mobile. And we're going to try out an X-Men trailer. And we'll play it in the browser so we use Flash. The default is 360p when it's embedded like this, and if we stretch it to full screen, it'll go to 480. And we are streaming this over Verizon ZVDO Rev A 3G network.
A little bit of buffering there. Definitely a device has no problem playing Flash at 480p. Occasional buffering, well, that's Verizon's 3G network. We'll switch over to Wi-Fi now and see how that goes. And now we've switched over to Wi-Fi. You can see the difference between the network and the CPU and how it plays. Clearly, so Wi-Fi is doing great. And now we switch up to 720p. And you can see we've got some frame drops going on there, which may have more to do with YouTube and them not always serving things smoothly above 480p. It's feel a bit iffy, but clearly 480 does a good job with. This also has a mobile hotspot feature. There's a little shortcut right here to get into the standard Android settings for that. You turn it on by checking it and then you can manage your settings for the mobile hotspot. Verizon does charge extra monthly for that feature. You can add it or remove it at any time. But it's nice to know you can use this as a 3G mobile hotspot. One thing we did notice is because this is a very thin phone with a metal casing, if you play a lot of video, you will feel some heat back here. It doesn't mean the phone's going to explode on you, but it's just working hard, and the CPU is probably very close to the metal casing. So that's the Motorola Droid X2 on Verizon with 3G and a dual-core Tegra 2 1GHz CPU. Excellent voice phone, very nice display, 4.3 inch. It's a phone we can easily recommend. We like the original Droid X quite well on Verizon as well. Of course, the competition really is heating up just on Verizon alone. You've got the Thunderbolt with 4G being a bigger phone. You've got the Droid Charge. These cost a bit more as well. So it's nice to have a choice, but I would still say if you're looking for a 3G fast phone with excellent build quality, sturdy, Good looking phone. The Droid X2 is a good choice. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website to read the full review.